Nick Bostrom, Wikipedia article audio. Nick Bostrom, born March 10, 1973 is a Swedish philosopher at the University of Oxford known for his work on existential risk, the anthropic principle, human enhancement ethics, superintelligence risks, and the reversal test. In 2011, he founded the Oxford Martin Programme on the Impacts of Future Technology, and he is currently the founding director of the Future of Humanity Institute at Oxford University. Biography Views Existential Risk Superintelligence Human Vulnerability in Relation to Advances in AI Illustrative Scenario for Takeover Open Letter Anthropic Reasoning Simulation Argument Ethics of Human Enhancement Technology Strategy Policy and Consultations Bibliography Books Journal Articles Bostrom is the author of over 200 publications, including Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies, a New York Times bestseller and Anthropic Bias, Observation Selection Effects in Science and Philosophy. In 2009 and 2015, he was included in Foreign Policy's Top 100 Global Thinkers list. Bostrom is best known for arguing that, although there are potentially great benefits from artificial intelligence, it may pose a catastrophic risk to humanity if the problems of control and alignment are not solved before artificial general intelligence is developed. His work on superintelligence and his concern for its existential risk to humanity over the coming century have brought both Elon Musk and Bill Gates to similar thinking. Born as Niklas Bostrom in 1973 in Helsingborg, Sweden, he disliked school at a young age, and he ended up spending his last year of high school learning from home. He sought to educate himself in a wide variety of disciplines, including anthropology, art, literature, and science. Despite what has been called a serious mean, he once did some turns on London's stand-up comedy circuit. He holds a BA in Philosophy, Mathematics, Logic and Artificial Intelligence from the University of Gothenburg and Master's degrees in Philosophy and Physics, and Computational Neuroscience from Stockholm University and King's College London, respectively. During his time at Stockholm University, he researched the relationship between language and reality by studying the analytic philosopher W. V. Quine. In 2000, he was awarded a Ph.D. in philosophy from the London School of Economics. He held a teaching position at Yale University, and he was a British Academy postdoctoral fellow at the University of Oxford. Aspects of Bostrom's research concern the future of humanity and long-term outcomes. He introduced the concept of an existential risk, which he defines as one in which an adverse outcome would either annihilate Earth-originating intelligent life or permanently and drastically curtail its potential. In the 2008 volume Global Catastrophic Risks, Editors Bostrom and Milan Serkovic characterize the relation between existential risk and the broader class of global catastrophic risks, and link existential risk to observer selection effects and the Fermi paradox. In 2005, Bostrom founded the Future of Humanity Institute, which researches the far future of human civilization. He is also an advisor to the Center for the Study of Existential Risk. In his 2014 book Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies, 
Bostrom reasoned that the creation of a superintelligent being represents a possible means to the extinction of mankind. Bostrom argues that a computer with near-human level general intellectual ability could initiate an intelligence explosion on a digital time scale with the resultant rapid creation of something so powerful that it might deliberately or accidentally destroy humankind. Bostrom contends the power of a superintelligence would be so great that a task given to it by humans might be taken to open-ended extremes. For example a goal of calculating pi could collaterally cause nanotechnology manufactured facilities to sprout over the entire Earth's surface and cover it within days. He believes the existential risk to humanity would be greatest almost immediately after superintelligence is brought into being, thus creating an exceedingly difficult problem of finding out how to control such an entity before it actually exists. Warning that a human-friendly prime directive for AI would rely on the absolute correctness of the human knowledge it was based on, Bostrom points to the lack of agreement among most philosophers as an indication that most philosophers are wrong, and the possibility that a fundamental concept of current science may be incorrect. Bostrom says that our few precedents to guide an understanding what pure non-anthropocentric rationality would dictate for a potential singleton AI being held in quarantine. Noting that both John von Neumann and Bertrand Russell advocated a nuclear strike, or the threat of one, to prevent the Soviets acquiring the atomic bomb, Bostrom says the relatively unlimited means of superintelligence might make for its analysis moving along different lines to the evolved diminishing returns assessments that in humans confer a basic aversion to risk. Group selection in predators working by means of cannibalism shows the counterintuitive nature of non-anthropocentric evolutionary search reasoning and thus humans are ill-equipped to perceive what an artificial intelligence's intentions would be. Accordingly, it cannot be discounted that any superintelligence would ineluctably pursue an all-or-nothing offensive action strategy in order to achieve hegemony and assure its survival. Bostrom notes that even current programs have, like MacGyver, hit on apparently unworkable but functioning hardware solutions making robust isolation of superintelligence problematic. A machine with general intelligence far below human level, but superior mathematical abilities is created. Keeping the AI in isolation from the outside world especially the Internet, humans pre-program the AI so it always works from basic principles that will keep it under human control. Other safety measures include the AI being boxed, and being used only as an oracle to answer carefully defined questions in a limited reply. A cascade of recursive self-improvement solutions feeds an intelligence explosion in which the AI attains superintelligence in some domains. The superintelligent power of the AI goes beyond human knowledge to discover flaws in the science that underlies its friendly to humanity programming, which ceases to work as intended. Purposeful agent-like behavior emerges along with a capacity for self-interested strategic deception. The AI manipulates human beings into implementing modifications to itself that are ostensibly for augmenting its modest capabilities but will actually function to free superintelligence from its boxed isolation. Employing online humans as paid dupes, and clandestinely hacking computer systems including automated laboratory facilities, the superintelligence mobilizes resources to further a takeover plan. Bostrom emphasizes that planning by a superintelligence will not be so stupid that humans could detect actual weaknesses in it. Although he canvasses disruption of international economic, political, and military stability including hacked nuclear missile launches, Bostrom thinks the most effective and likely means for superintelligence to use would be a coup de main with weapons several generations more advanced than current state-of-the-art.
he suggests nanofactories covertly distributed at undetectable concentrations in every square meter of the globe to produce a worldwide flood of human killing devices on command. Once a superintelligence has achieved world domination, humankind would be relevant only as resources for the achievement of the AI's objectives. One journalist wrote in a review that Bostrom's nihilistic speculations indicate he has been reading too much of the science fiction he professes to dislike. In January 2015, Bostrom joined Stephen Hawking among others in signing the Future of Life Institute's open letter warning of the potential dangers of AI. The signatories believe that research on how to make AI systems robust and beneficial is both important and timely, and that concrete research should be pursued today. Bostrom has published numerous articles on anthropic reasoning, as well as the book Anthropic Bias, Observation Selection Effects in Science and Philosophy. In the book, he criticizes previous formulations of the anthropic principle, including those of Brandon Carter, John Leslie, John Barrow, and Frank Tipler. Bostrom believes that the mishandling of indexical information is a common flaw in many areas of inquiry. He argues that a theory of anthropics is needed to deal with these. He introduces the self-sampling assumption and the self-indication assumption, shows how they lead to different conclusions in a number of cases, and points out that each is affected by paradoxes or counterintuitive implications in certain thought experiments. He suggests that a way forward may involve extending SSA into the strong self-sampling assumption, which replaces observers in the SSA definition with observer moments. In later work, he has described the phenomenon of anthropic shadow, an observation selection effect that prevents observers from observing certain kinds of catastrophes in their recent geological and evolutionary past. Catastrophe types that lie in the anthropic shadow are likely to be underestimated unless statistical corrections are made. Bostrom's simulation argument posits that at least one of the following statements is very likely to be true. The idea has influenced the views of Elon Musk. Bostrom is favorable towards human enhancement, or self-improvement and human perfectibility through the ethical application of science, as well as a critic of bioconservative views. In 1998, Bostrom CEO founded the World Transhumanist Association. In 2004, he CEO founded the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies, although he is no longer involved in either of these organizations. Bostrom was named in Foreign Policy's 2009 list of top global thinkers for accepting no limits on human potential. With philosopher Toby Ord, he proposed the reversal test. Given humans' irrational status quo bias, how can one distinguish between valid criticisms of proposed changes in a human trait and criticisms merely motivated by resistance to change? The reversal test attempts to do this by asking whether it would be a good thing if the trait was altered in the opposite direction. He has suggested that technology policy aimed at reducing existential risk should seek to influence the order in which various technological capabilities are attained proposing the principle of differential technological development. This principle states that we ought to retard the development of dangerous technologies, particularly ones that raise the level of existential risk, and accelerate the development of beneficial technologies, particularly those that protect against the existential risks posed by nature or by other technologies. Bostrom's theory of the unilateralist's curse has been cited as a reason for the scientific community to avoid controversial dangerous research such as reanimating pathogens. Bostrom has provided policy advice and consulted for an extensive range of governments and organizations. 
he gave evidence to the House of Lords, Select Committee on Digital Skills. He is an advisory board member for the Machine Intelligence Research Institute, Future of Life Institute, Foundational Questions Institute and an external advisor for the Cambridge Centre for the Study of Existential Risk.